Hey guys, it's the Ultimate Filmer here, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new PowerDirector 17. So the first thing we're going to do is dive right into the software and see what's sort of new. Okay, so once you open up for the first time your new version of PowerDirector 17, you might notice that it's a little bit faster, or you might not, but definitely I think that the producing time for a video when you're exporting it is much shorter, and some overall operations just seem faster. So that's one of the things, the performance has definitely improved. Now throughout the many things that are different in PowerDirector 17, right now we're going to go ahead and talk about the title designer. So if we go ahead and take a title and drag it onto the timeline, we're just going to go into designer, make sure you're on advanced, just so you get all the features. And the thing I wanted to show in the title designer that I thought was uh, pretty cool, if you go up into effect, special effects, that is now here, that's new. And these are all new, so we, if we go into something like lightning, it'll give you a little preview. And if you click on any one of these, you'll see that you'll have a list of looks. So each one is different. So you can just sort of look through them, see how they are different. Say if I was going to choose look four, It'll just give me a little preview. And I can change the size of this lightning. I'm gonna keep it smaller, a little bit more realistic. Let me put it to more of a yellowish orange. You can also change the length of the lightning. See, now it just looks like there's less. I think that looks cool. And you can actually keyframe all of these operations. So you can keyframe the size, the color, and the length. So if I play this, you'll notice that the color actually changes a little bit. And there we go. That's just a quick example of the new title designer features that I think can be useful and are pretty great. So if you click on a clip and go into designer and mask designer, so you'll probably notice that now there is a create a brush masked tool. So basically what you can do is change the size of the brush and the transparency. I'm going to fill in the rest of the picture. There we go. Let's just click OK. And now I can just invert the mask. And there we go. We've just got a simple little cutout of this biker. And a quick thing I would just also like to point out is if you go on to fix enhance on a clip and go into color presets and LUTs. What is different from the last version is that if you imported a LUT, you would just import it at one time for that clip. And But now, now you can import them and as you import them, they'll stay there. So you can just click on them next time you need them. So next, if we bring in a video, this new skateboard video, which is new, and we go onto tools, and we go to motion tracker. So I actually noticed that the motion tracker is improved, in fact. It tracks more accurately and also there's a few new features. So if we just track this guy's skateboard, it'll go ahead and track. Now if I stop it, we can actually go and make it track frame by frame. And make sure it doesn't fall off its target. And we can just continue to track. And as you can see, it's doing a pretty good job. So once you've finished your track, just go into title or whatever else you want to put on the track. Let's just type something. There we go, nice and simple. So as well as in the title designer, there is also a new backdrop feature in the motion tracker. So we can change the shape of the background and the color and size and also the opacity. So we can just throw a quick border on there. So if you have smooth checked, you can actually make it even smoother. And so now I just find the tracking is better overall, which is definitely a great improvement and will be helpful. So with this same clip, we're going to go into designer and PIP designer. So now if we open up chroma key and check the box, you can see it looks a little bit different now. There are less settings to do, which makes it simpler and easier for people that don't really know how to do it. So if we just select a part in the sky and then we can change the color range and how much we want to denoise it. The great new feature about this too is you can add multiple keys so you can key out different colors on the same clip. 
and so the chroma key has been improved a little bit too. And so another thing that is much easier to do now is change the opacity and keyframe it. So before to keyframe the opacity, you would have to go into the PIP designer and change the opacity with keyframes in the PIP designer. But now if you just press control, hold it down, just like if you're changing the audio, now we can add keyframe points right there. So it works the same way you can change the keyframes with the audio. And so now audio is much easier to work with right inside of PowerDirector. So if you right click on your audio, go into edit audio and audio editor. There are a lot of similar features here that you can find inside of audio director. So if you don't have audio director or you don't want to have to keep switching in between the programs, this is a great little tool that will, I think will go a long way. So right here inside of power director, now you can just add reverb and echo wherever you feel like it. You can change all of those and just hit apply. So those are some great new audio tools that weren't in PowerDirector before. So I think that's great that they've integrated them right into the program. So thank you all for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and perhaps subscribing and I'll see you all later. Bye.